This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to my 383rd consecutive MTG Arena YouTube original video. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, we are checking out Teamer Clover. Teamer Clover, this deck, just one dream hack open. This deck has been number one on Mythic Ladder in the hands of the same person, by the way. So, uh, what's going on here? Edgewall Innkeeper, Fey of Wishes, Brazen Borrower, Bone Crusher Giant, Lovestruck Beast, a whole bunch of adventure stuff, Beanstalk Giant. And then on top of that, we have Lucky Clover to double the effects of all the adventure stuff. And then we have basically even more card advantage. <laughs> we have Escape to the Wild and Great Henge, and then a selection tool in Incubation, which tries to find us an adventure creature or an Edgewall Innkeeper when we need one. And that's the whole deck, but wait, there's more. Fey of Wishes uses Granted to grab cards from the sideboard, sometimes in packs of twos or threes. Thank you to Lucky Clover for that. And in the sideboard, there's a number of answers. The only major change I made to the deck right now is there was a third Aether Gust. I cut it to two for a Pulse of Marasa. I wanted a little bit more life gain and to reuse some adventure stuff from the graveyard. So this is something that I'm trying out and I've liked it so far. The quick life gain hit seems to matter in best of one, where the format's a bit more aggressive. So on top of that, we have cheap interaction in the form of Mystic Repeal. We have a Shadow Spear for the lifelink and the tramples and the hexproofs and the indestructibles. More Aether Gust. I actually want the Aether Gust back. I, I end up fetching this card so much, I do want the third one. Disdainful Stroke. Negate the counter spells. Protect our position if we're a little bit ahead. Fling, which turns into a mega finisher with Beanstalk Giant. Then we have the Return to Nature, destroying an artifact, enchantment, or graveyard card. Domri's Ambush, knock off something with a big old Beanstalk Giant or other adventure card. A Spyglass, um, in DreamHack I saw this name Dream Trawler against Blue White. I imagine naming Witch's Oven against Cat Oven's important, so things like that. Pulse of Marasa, like I said, Storm's Wrath, this is one of the new cards added to the deck so that you can wrap the board if you need to. Once in future, letting you get back a few key cards at instant speed, Escape the Wilds, and Chandra the Awakened Inferno. And I'm going to do something right now. When I play against this deck on ladder, when, I, when other people are playing this deck, I win a lot of games against them that I shouldn't win. And it's always the same thing. Because when they resolve granted, they almost always fetch Chandra. Awaken Inferno. It can't be countered, right? It's a big flashy planeswalker, right? Guys, you fetch it way too much. All of y'all, arena players who try out this deck, stop fetching Chandra the Awaken Inferno as a result. And to make my point, I'm going to do this for the video. If you want to put her back in, I get it, but I'm trying to make a point. I'm cutting Chandra. I'm just taking it away. That way, nobody can tell me to go fetch Chandra in the comments. That way nobody can get confused. I'm going to add an expansion explosion instead, and that's that. But seriously, y'all can have Chandra in your sideboard. Chandra is best when it serves as a straight up board wipe. Chandra is best when your opponent's at an insanely low life total and on control or something like that. Y'all fetch Chandra way too much. It's not that hard of a card to deal with. I win a lot of games where I have two or three Chandra's emblems on me with all kinds of decks. It's not too difficult. Like, like guys, if you're gonna fetch Chandra, gotta make sure it's the right time, okay? That's that's just what I wanted to get out there. I wanted that off my chest. Um, other adjustments I've thought about making to the main deck to deal with a more aggressive meta game. There are a few things that I just want. Um, I've actually thought about getting some Phloxen Intruder for the mirror, which I think is going to come up some where you can attack down a Lucky Clover, keep the opponent from playing their Lucky Clover on turn two to gain some critical tempo, just kind of buy them off for a turn. So I th I've been thinking about this card a little bit. But um, also Bond of Flourishing is one that I've found helping me out in food a lot. And I'm still working on a good Jun food pile for right now, but Bond of Flourishing can help find Lucky Clover, whereas Incubation can't. Lucky Clover seems to be the key card, but you do have to take turn two off, which is pretty painful. But overall, I'm going to keep the deck the same as it absolutely 
was at least the main and a few flexes in the sideboard but don't be afraid to play around just not too much this is a pretty fun deck with a lot of cool play to it and this immediate shell when it gets rumbling it rumbles prepare for some 2x speed games all right let's dive in let the nonsense begin i'm going to play a standard event for this you can only access those by having all play modes turned on on this toggle switch up here go up here find event go on in the fact that it has a beginning, middle, end, and gold rewards makes for great YouTube videos. So I'm going to go pick my deck. And here we go. I'm going to rope a lot. This, this deck has too many decisions. You may need the 2x speed if, if, if my too many decisions trigger you. Well, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. I'm gonna rope. Just get used to it right now. So we keep this definitely because, you know what? It doesn't have blue mana, but it has a clover. And clover is what you're looking for, and there's blue mana. So everything is going according to plan. Blue black says go. I'm not holding back. Gotta try to resolve this as soon as possible. Can't let it sit in your hand. The opponent will thought erase it. Thought erasure. What I, what did I say? What more can I say? We got lucky. They drew it one turn later. Takes my love struck beast. Bins a disinformation campaign. Wow. All right. Again. Pretty sweet. So the opponent can definitely pick apart our hand, but as soon as we draw a Fey of Wishes, we reload and we reload brutally and quickly. Covetous urge. Go ahead. You stole my bone crusher giant. It's a lot better for me than it is for you. And keep slow rolling what I have in my hand. It's possible I want to cast a borrower there, but I don't think so. I think I am waiting for them to deploy something. All right. Escape to the wilds, huh? I do want to get that cast. I mean, they can steal something from me, but it probably does more for me than it does for them. Let's go for it. Let's take a ride. You think they have a counter? They left two mana open. They didn't counter any of the clovers, though. They might have Drown in the lock. Yeah. Let's go for this. Okay, sweet. Scry, find me the goods. Let's go. Actually, whatever I scry is going to get taken by the thief, so we want to hide it. In this case, we want to put that on the bottom. I would have left, like, a land on top. All right, see if you get something good. Two lands in the bin. Tomebound Lich to the battlefield. Draw discard. All right, I like where this is going. So you're gonna see some of the absolute glory of this deck. First of all, the free being stock giant, fertile footsteps. With the two lucky clovers, it's complete. It pays for itself. It fetches untapped lands. Second, Bone Crusher Giant in triplicate. Shoot him down. What? It's a very fun machine gun. All right. Third, Bone Crusher Giant in triplicate part two. Probably should have pointed at face, but I don't think it's going to matter here. Well, that was fun. So let's hold on to the Brazen Borrower and send out this giant. Let's start threatening the opponent with mediocre creatures. 
Good old giant beatdown plan. Our opponent plays their own Bone Crusher Giant from my deck. Thanks, opponent. I've got a plan for that. So we don't have to attack in here. The opponent still has another one. I want to Brazen Borrow them back to my hand. I guess we can do that when the time is right to kill them. This does six damage face, but let's spend a turn just gassing up. More. Let's play this because Ritual sets a card our opponent could run. Mm, we'll deploy another one of these. All right, what you gonna do? I'm not even attacking. I still plan to bounce this to my hand and use it against my opponent next turn. Yep, Tyrant Scorn's the card that was being held up for a pretty long amount of time. And now a Stomp is gonna come in and take out one of the tokens. Ashiok, okay. Makes a 2-3, that's not gonna save you though. Bing. Triple, triple. Bing. And one more for the road. <laughs> we get the oopsie emote. <laughs> I guess I'll play along. Bang, bang, bang. All the ammo. All the crazy. Oi. And that's how the cookie crumbles. You thought the fourth win was going to be easy. We're going to have to try again. We got shut down. Boros said, hell no. Not today, Clover boy. This isn't Nighthawk, this is Righthawk. Two lucky clovers and a borrower. I think you keep all of the clover hands. I think that's kind of a given with this deck. Gutter bones. All right, they're being aggressive on the play. Again, I think we keep the adventure creatures. I think that's also kind of a given. Once you have your clover, you need something to do with it. But how low will our life total be? Dreadhorde invasion. Hmm. Not the most aggressive card on its own. Like when you're following up Gutter Bones, you really want a body that can attack for more damage. This takes a turn at least to get you one. Ben Lurker, annoying. So we could drop off Escape to the Wilds and keep our lands, but we might never draw more of them. I think it's Escape which is a really good hit for a little obnoxious little fen lurker boy. And an oven. All right. Fun. <laughs> the opponent has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight permanents. Get a pain-free source of blue here. What else you got? <laughs> okay, dude. <sighs> okay. Micro advantage the deck. <laughs> okay. And a cat. What an annoying little pile of garbage. All right. This <laughs> can call this deck kitty litter. Um. Next turn. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have to do something this turn. So we're gonna need a brazen borrower. I may as well put this out and trade it if I can. We need to live long enough to also play Fay of Wishes, get good stuff, and use it. But again, it looks like being on the draw and the opponent going really wide is the thing this deck just isn't ready for. Just in current in current form, it doesn't seem to handle it. Yep. So I'm bouncing what? I could bounce this food, but the opponent will just sack something else to get the food going. But then I guess they do have to throw away their own creature. 
No, they can do that in response to the borrower. So I guess we just have to let this be. Okay, they didn't bring the cat back. That's one less damage I take here. So what are we bouncing? Right now I want to bounce the gutter bones. The 3-3. Three, three. I don't really want to bounce a Fen Lurker. I need to keep this card. This could get them to pump it. If they pump it, I could bounce it. It doesn't necessarily come back down this turn. It also uses their mana. It's a little risky. Because if their last card is a swamp and they replay it and I lose the Fey of Wishes, it's a big loss. Well, that wasn't what I should have targeted. Should have targeted something different. I should have targeted like the Dreadhorde invasion with the first one so I actually get to keep the creature, but oh well. I guess we're doing what we're doing. Got a little in my head there. The bright side, they don't get to cycle the cat oven here. And is that last card a swamp? Do I get punished? Do I get punished? I do not. Hallelujah. All right, I can make a bunch of 1-1s. One That's a pretty good draw, but I think it's more important to get this resolved before they take it away from me. We'll probably go get something we don't mind discarding to the Fen Lurker. And then we'll get two other cards that are going to save our bacon. So what's that going to be? Good Sorcerer Spyglass the Oven. That's not bad. What else? I guess having a sweeper, but we don't have the mana to cast it. It's a little unfortunate. Maybe a Pulse of Marasa is where we need to be. Buy more time, get a card back. I probably overvalue that card. But I still think it's about right. So, Spyglass. Pull some Marasa. And what's the card I'm not going to need in this matchup at all? I'll grab an Aether Gust. Now I just have something to discard to this stupid Fen Lurker. Bang. <laughs> you want to bring back the cat? Trade with my innkeeper? I guess so. Eh, shouldn't have done that. That's a little too brazen. Way too brazen. Like I said, sleepy. Chinese food. Brain meltdown. I just wanted something to get back with my pulse of Marasa. Pulse of Mufasa. Obviously. Dead. Dread Presence. Okay. Fun. Down to five. Second oven. Cool. All right. We've got double... Cl Ooh, that's a, that's a draw. Let's get it going. The question is, if I have three 1-1s one and I shut down the oven, can I live or will the opponent kill me? Too tired to work this out. <laughs> Covert goes sleepy. Let's see. Block, 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 take one. I should live. Easy, easy peasy. Unless they draw a swamp and kill me with dread presence. I'd 
rather be lucky than good anyway. <laughs> I'll even get two draws at it. My line is terrible. My line is legitimately terrible, but oh well. That's my life. I hope they draw a consecutive castle lock planes. So if they remember to bring back the cat, they can kill me. Let's see if they remember. Well, if they find a swamp as well. They didn't remember. They needed the attacker. Because now they can get me to two, but I can block everything. And the cat comes back once. And that's one. All right. Bye bye, Aether Gust. What's going to happen? It's so scary. That Beanstalk Giant was a perfect draw just so I have more resources to work with next turn. Otherwise, I'd just stay kind of endlessly behind. Bloxies. Bloxikins. So I couldn't like do all three in front of the Dread Presence because I'd still die to the cat. I shut down the oven, but there's still a food. The cat can still come back and hit me for one. So don't forget. Don't forget when suggesting me things in your comments. I love your comments. Every now and then you guys have some pretty weird suggestions that leave me dead. Let's get you. We got to draw our way back into some goodies. Let's go with the 5-5. Five five. I mean, hopefully we draw another Lovestruck Beast would be perfect. No, land. Doesn't surprise me. But now I've got something that they don't really want to attack into and a higher life total. Let's hope we get to keep our Edgewall Innkeeper around to draw a few more cards. If not, I don't know. This is looking bad. We're a few top decks away from being in good shape. Okay. Ona hasn't had any removal yet. I keep waiting for it, but we have not seen any removal out of them. No good attack? Wow. Okay. We need a big turn. Let's start with you. Oh, nice. I was worried I'd have to bounce that. All right, let's go outside the game and do some stuff. We have three mana left. Three mana is not four. We could love struck beast away the dread presence. That's solid or, you know, with an ambush. That's what I mean. So our opponent's pretty wide board. Having a Storm's Wrath seems pretty good. What else? Return to Nature can cut off the Dread Presence, I suppose. But I think I just want another Reload ready to go in Escape to the Wilds. I think if I have that, I'll be okay. Wait, is there one already in the graveyard? No. All right. Um, it's that or the once in future to get some graveyard stuff back. Honestly, if I'm recycling Storm's Wrath and Pulse of Marasa, I'm probably pretty good. So I'll grab this. It also means I probably can't get shut down uh, from getting back to an Edgewall Innkeeper. All right. We can also take out the Yara, which I guess is good reach, but this can so easily kill the Innkeeper that this is what I most want to kill. It's kind of tough, but I'll go with this one. With a Yara, at least it, it like incentivizes them to play further into Storm's Wrath. Whereas this can kind of incentivize them to hold back on the board and just use their land drops as a weapon. All right, turning things around, back from the brink of despair.
Got a bones. Of course. <laughs> Draw a card with gutter bones. Combo assembled. <laughs> and round and round we go. All right. And second invasion. Our opponent at 19. How do we set it up so we just burn them out? If I draw another land, I might be bouncing this Fae of Wishes to Storm's Wrath. Beanstalk Giant is free and a lot of land. Let's do it. Okay, we definitely want to cast the Storm's Wrath. What else do we want to do? We have five, potentially six mana. I guess I'm probably using once in future to get something back that I want. I could play this Fae of Wishes, draw a card, then pay to discard the land and the card I draw to return this to my hand and have it set up for the future, but I may as well, if I'm going to do that, do that on a different turn. And we may as well attack with Fae. We're gonna lose the innkeeper too, actually. Maybe the opponent wouldn't block it. But we don't wanna lose the beast. Who knows, opponent might be scared to block innkeeper, you never know. Unless you have something else to bluff or something else you want them to do. Might as well attack with it. One of the risks of this deck that I've definitely fallen into multiple times is the value trap. If you go too hard for the value, if you try to make everything in the deck about value, if you try to get every possible inch out of every card, you could just die in the meantime. <laughs> like, it, it's definitely a little bit of a trap in that way. I don't want to get this back until I can fetch with it, so I'm going to use this. Um... I guess I don't see any two mana card I plan to cast this turn, so I can play this tapped. So what are we getting? We can get this Fae of Wishes. We can get this Pulse of Marasa. That's a pretty good setup. We can get back an Edge Wall or a Brazen Borrower later if we choose to. These Dreadhorde Invasions are going to help put us in Fling Giant territory really quickly. We're at 13 now. Our opponent only has 16 life, and they're losing two a turn. They can gain one at instant speed from the cat in this piece of food, so don't forget that. And there's another life with a Yara. So they're not done yet, and I'm at frickin' six. Yeah, they're trying to get there. All right, remember it's an instant. Easy to forget. So do I want to Storm's Wrath them again? I don't think so. Just give me the pulse. I guess I could take the Wrath. Get the Yara gone. All right, fine. And then the pulse can get the Fey, and the Fey gets more sideboard cards, and life gets better and better and better. Another Fey. Very sweet. Now I don't need to pulse for it. I can pulse for an innkeeper and attack with the beast. And this turn I'll p play this Fey of Wishes rather than using Granted, so that I can just draw a card off the Sin Keeper. This can still come back, right? Has nothing to do with the oven. The way that that resolved really fast made me think the cat doesn't work. Am I missing something? 
All right. Well, whatever. Moving on. Moving right along. All right. Now priority is being held. So the opponent must have just hit the like pass turn, like yield to all, whatever that is. To use fertile footsteps. Now we'll have enough land to go play a beanstalk and probably go get fling and cast it. The thirteen required mana. Yep. Just hang on to that in hand. I guess there's some risk because of Fen Lurker, but we have one on the board already. No big deal. Draw a card with the castle. Better be a really good one. Priest. Priest is here. Bring that cat, get back gutter bones. Yep, here we go. <laughs> of course. Alright, get me a Shadow Spear, cause lull. Give me a fling, cause double lull. Give me the expansion explosion for triple lull. Draw a card, cause that's great. And there we go. Game. Four wins. Money back dance. Money back dance. Get that money. Make it make it right. So cringy and wholesome, you have to love it. Do or die. Do or die. We're on the play. I don't think... I don't think we have bad matchups if we're on the play. I think we only have bad matchups on the draw. So if I were to adjust this deck against aggro, it needs more cheap plays. Um, <laughs> I guess we'll put it to the test right here, right now. So I could play the innkeeper, D up. I could also just get another tap land out of the way, Beanstalk Giant, then Brazen Borrow some things. Oh, what the heck. Let's get an Innkeeper in the way. Staying alive is what matters. Card advantage? We'll just have to find a way to get that later, since a lot of our deck is card advantage. Hopefully we can make that happen. Alright. They always have it, don't they? Like decks like this cut shock at the world championships. But that doesn't mean you can expect your stuff to live on ladder. That's not the way not the way magic works. Ladder does what the ladder wants to do. I'm glad to see a good bounce start. Like, a good bounce target. Yes, indeed. Okay. Let's see if the opponent tries to set up for the Ember Cleave here. Okay. If they try to shift to combat, they might have the Ember Cleave. I guess we could let them go for it. Let the Ember Cleave be on the battlefield. Okay, it's annoying. It's not gonna gain anything though. So before they get to attack, let's go ahead and send away Annex and the Scorch Spitter since it actually has summoning sickness. They actually deal the same amount of damage and no cards will get stolen, of course. It's a good setback, but we still need something. We need to draw something better here. Torbran, huh? Wow, this is not going well. We're hanging in there, but 
It's not quite what I was hoping for. I assume the opponent's going to go for the Torbran. They have another land, so bouncing the Spitter doesn't look that good. They just replay it. So this time we're going to bounce the Robber. All right. If we're going to bounce the Robber anyway, we can wait until this trigger from the Spitter's on the stack, just so that we're in combat, they don't do anything else. The red deck is so up on cards on me, though. Like, they're so far ahead in cards. Oh my god. Just nothing but lands all the way down. I know, I do kind of want that edge wall innkeeper back, but it would be a different game if my opponent had... If they had gotten to play a Robber of the Rich on turn two instead of had to Bone Crusher the edge wall innkeeper, it would have been a much different game. And we're only a good top deck away, you know? A Fae of Wishes, an Escape the Wilds, a Bone Crusher Giant, you know, we're a good top deck away. When it goes with the Hardened in the Forge card. I wonder how bad main deck Pulse Morasa would be in a deck like this. I know it's slow, but like that life gain that it's almost like an extra time walk in a lot of spots where the opponent can deal that amount of damage and getting that extra turn plus the extra adventure creature or the card advantage creature back seems like it could make the difference. That's the draw. That is the draw. And what do we get? Shadow Spear, baby. Um, <laughs> Shadow Spear Aethergust. There's a Storm's Wrath. There's a Torbrand coming down. The opponent, if I get the Aethergust, they'll play around it. Um, <laughs> does seem like Shadow Spear would be all right, but probably not good enough. I'll just force them to have to block me pretty quickly. Let's just get two reactive cards. So, we'll get a Gust. And we'll get, what, a Negate? A Disdainful Stroke can counter the Torbrand, or it can counter something else. You can also get a Storm's Wrath and sweep them. That's pretty solid, but they have the Annex. Actually... So now that we have Gust, they won't go for Torbrand, I don't think. If we Gust away their Annex, though, and then sweep them, then they don't have anything good to Torbrand with. All right. Let's do it. Yeah. Oh, should have played the Fae of Wishes. Ah. Oh. oh, that might cost me big. That might cost me very big. Should have played the Fae of Wishes. All right, they're in the tank. They can go Torbran into Robber of the Rich, then get their board swept. We would Aether Gust away the Annex. We would block the Bone Crusher Giant. We would take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We would go to two. They had a shock in that hand. We would be dead. Let's see how they play it. We can wait till they declare their attackers. That's another creature. It's potentially lethal here now. But if they move all in, we can also hit the Torbran away, Storm's Wrath, Annex. Ugh. Yeah, I think that's what they're going for. Yeah, this is not good. Well, wait, I can block the Annex. All right, so these triggers go on the stack. Torbran goes away. Yeah, now I trade Beanstalk Giant for the Annex. Take a whole bunch of damage. Makes those tokens. I'm still alive. They can't block, so we attack first. Oh, 
Okay. Do I have lethal? Let's see. If I play you for two, then return you, then cast you. Nope. All my mana. Down to three. Storm's Wrath you. They have wishes. Borrower in hand. Can they kill me? Yeah, Beanstalk Giant lived because this was three devotion. That play worked out okay. Still should have had this Fate of Wishes down earlier, though. I mean, good game to me. It's three to three. If they've got it, freaking finish it. Phoenix of Ash, that's why they GG'd me. That was their last card. That's why they GG'd me, you guys. They thought they had me. I thought Phoenix to Ash was gonna get me. He's wrong. Nope. Absolutely not. Not today, Red Mage. Not this time. Close sweaty game though. Being on the play, man. Being on the plays is a thing. Seventh win or third loss? Prize or go home? Let's dance. Boom, boom, ba boom. It's got clover. What what do you want from me? I see I'm a simple man. I see clover I keep. I also see just about any combination of lands and spells and keep, as many of you know. I'm gonna put to put away this really expensive card though. Yep, hello. Yep, nice. I'm getting known around this parsh. That or people are just excited to play magic, which is totally possible. <laughs> Clover up in here. Blue white. Go fight. I guess I'll develop my blue mana. I may as well play the Skyland though. Make sure I have mana in the future. And I'll keep the card drawing machine. Hard to say if I should just bone crush something. I don't think so. There might be planeswalkers worth bone crushing. But I think next turn is devoted to Fey of Wishing. Just getting all kinds of annoying things for the opponent to deal with. No Teferi. Love it. Oh, okay. We do have a Teferi. All right, if they're going to bounce the Clover, what's my next turn look like? I can play Innkeeper into a Giant, which is pretty good. Then I can Fae the next turn, have a Mystic Repeal if they have, like, Elspeth Conquers Death. All right. Because I think that the plan here is going to be to bounce the Clover. We'll see if the opponent's ready with a Shatter the Sky. But we'll put down a board presence that they have to respect or their Teferi will take a beating. I'll protect you. Yeah, they are going to Shatter the Sky. Yeah. Okay. Maybe they are on a mission to counter this clover. That is possible. 
or they might shatter at end step. We definitely don't want to get our clover countered, but if we force it, we might get another like five damage and a little more card draw out of this. Let me start here. Show me some cards. Another innkeeper. It's pretty exciting. See if they want to absorb that. Okay, so now I get another turn. I can just run this out, draw a card. Then it would die. Is that terrible? Compared to next turn when I would play it and draw a card? I guess I'd play this and granted next turn. Yeah, we'll just say go. All right, I'll take my card, please. From my bone crushies. Cool. Settle in, this game might take a while. All right, so we can go to get Disdainful Stroke, which is a solid card against them. We can go get Negate, which is a solid card against them. We can resolve our Edgewall Innkeeper. What's the play? Or do we just get more and more card advantage? Maybe we don't want to be as reactive. Although negate, mm, pretty solid. I just don't think I want to hold it up here. I think I still want to get the innkeeper down. Make the opponent wrath one innkeeper if they have it, which would just let me go fetch like escape to the wilds and force it through. We definitely got ahead on mana without ramping, so maybe they do have some mana issues. I mean, if their mana is contained, we're pretty happy. This might be another absorb. All right, let's test you this way. I would like to draw this card. Would you like to counter this Fae of Wishes? Bone crush? Cool. What about this love struck beast? If I make a heart's desire, do you want to counter it? Actually, we'll probably just play the 5-5. Five five. Don't really need the 1-1 one one bad or anything. I'd rather draw the card. And still have negate open. The opponent counters that, I don't really care. We found another clover. That's what we really want to put on the board and keep on the board. Yeah, they're thinking about it. And yeah, they fire off and absorb, that's fine. Here's a clover. They had a pretty hard time getting rid of the last one. It took them a Teferi and an Absorb. I don't feel like I have to hold up Negate against them because they're probably not going to play anything on their turn anyway. I just feel like I have to win the fight over a threat. So I don't mind tapping out with Negate if it means I, revol I resolve something good. I'm the aggressive player. All right, they have another Teferi. We can deal. We can and will deal. So Bone Crusher Giant can pick it off. Let's first make sure that we hit our opponent with the Fae of Wishes. Or not the opponent, but the Teferi. Time for plan B. <laughs> what a tiny little sound. Weak. Let's see if our opponent has Dovin's Veto here. Do 
they do, we have granted. We can go get much better stuff than just this Bone Crusher that's killing Teferi. All right, that opens up our Negate Shields again. Ah, uh, manual taps. Here we go again. Okay. So here, I like expansion explosion quite a bit. I like escape to the wilds. Just more card advantage. I could play this and to draw a card, and like I said, just keep tapping out. We've already been through two Teferis. I do feel like there's an Elspeth Conqueror's Death coming, which is definitely worth a negate. But there's nothing out here to, to uh, for Death to Conquer. We just don't want the Teferi coming back, so maybe it's not worth it. But I can also use this Brazen Borrower, copied. Bounce away this wall. Maybe bounce this Birth of Melitus, which I don't care about. Yeah, I don't know. It's all weird. It's all weird. Borrower is probably better as a 3-1 than bouncing a wall. It would need some other very good target. Thirst. Sure. Drops off another berth. It's kind of like a land if they're digging for land. Tapped Hollow Fountain. Seems like they're keeping up a veto. I mean, maybe they plan to counter this escape to the wilds? That's fine, I suppose. We don't have to play it. Yeah, let's just play these instead. We'll draw a card for each one. Still getting very far ahead. Let's see, that's one, two, three to play that. One, two, two, Bone Crush. So we can wait. Yep. We'll we'll find ways to use our mana. And they're gonna keep playing Omen. I don't see any reason to play around a counter spell like resolving the Bone Crusher Giant right now. If they want to veto like one side of a Bone Crusher Giant, I am fine with that. Get it out of their hand, right? What's the play, dude? Shatter the sky. Is it worth fighting the fight over this board? I don't think so. But it might get my opponent to cast and absorb if I go for this negate, and then I get escape to the wilds, and I get to rebuild and possibly resolve more clovers. But let's see what happens. I feel like there's not many wrong ways to eat this Reese's. The opponent doesn't want to fight the counter fight because I, they know I'll win. I have Expansion Explosion. All right, let's do this. Get a little damage, draw another card. That two shatters, I believe. All right, another Fae of Wishes, more counter magic. This will be fun for them. Alright, the wall is taking it. The wall is taking a beating. I'm just gonna pay the life. Not even gonna math it. I'll find a use for mana. I'm pretty good at finding a use for mana with this deck. And I know from being in the opponent's shoes playing blue-white control, the groan 
There, there's kind of like this groan that goes on in your mind when you see another Fae of Wishes. Let's go ahead and... I think it's time to grab Once in Future and start getting back. Um, just recycling the counter spells. Still plan to Bone Crush them. I guess we can play one of these and draw a card. Have Disdainful Stroke, Bone Crusher open. Or a Disdainful Stroke expansion if we don't want to do the Bone Crushing. Why not keep the cards coming? <laughs> Why the heck not? Yep, you've got a thirst for meaning. How do they compete with this? What what can you do? You can try this. I will disdainful stroke it. If I expand it, is it lethal? Almost. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 14. They're at 16. I guess I could use once in future to get back a Bone Crusher Giant if anything happened to it. Yeah, let's make them tap out. We're gonna go for an Absorb. Oh, a Veto on the Stroke. Okay. All right, I will expansion. I will copy Dovin's Veto. I'll point the Dovin's Veto at the Shatter the Sky so that another Dovin's Veto can't stop it. All this damage is so close to lethal. I think of, I think if I get this hit in, I will be able to close the game. With Bone Crusher in the graveyard, I'm pretty sure this is just lethal. So... I am taking into account the opponent might have another veto, but it appears they don't. Ah, oh, sporting. They are a sporting type. Thank you. Good game. Hope you'll comment if uh, I play against you and you watch the video. I hope you leave me a comment. I love to. I love to know. All right, I am three minutes late for my stream. I stream Monday through Thursday, so uh, yeah, I gotta get to that. I wouldn't change a thing about the deck. Well, I'm still in the, I'm still debating a few spots, but I don't have any conclusions. Just ways to stay alive a little longer. Maybe even some Storm's Wrath in the main. Well, thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.